Tell me about the Priory. After Jesus went bye-bye, there was a lot of debate as to who they should look to to lead. Probably because Jesus had said all the disciples were equal and that bit about Peter being a rock wouldn't mysteriously appear in the Bible for a little while longer. There was one who did seem to have a higher authority, though. Even in churches that don't like her, she is called the Apostle to the Apostles. That was Mary Magdalene, who was not a whore. Are you sure? That would make things much more interesting. Some people have no respect for religion. Get on with it. In the beginning, people got along. A bit. Paul was killing everyone, but his name was Saul at the time, so it was okay. Peter was pissing off many. James, Jesus' brother, had his own ideas, and much of the church revolved around him for a time. Mary Magdalene was looked at with reverence. Judas Thomas was writing his stuff. Go on. It was all going well. People of both sexes were allowed to rule, the clergy was part of the laity, and people were nice to each other. Things were looking up. Paul, the slaughterer of Christians, claimed divine intervention, changed his religion and his name, and joined in. Paul started off like a typical misogynist homophobe coming out of Roman conquer culture, which is to say that he said that marriage should be monogamous, gays were bad, and women should both lack authority and remain silent. The last part was certainly harmful to people like Mary, but she may have already jumped ship when he was in his killing phase. The legends put her on her way to Egypt. How long she was there for and what she did is unknown. What is known is that in the end there is strong, though very far from solid, evidence that she ended up in France of all places. She is said to have arrived with two other Marys and a mysterious Sarah the Egyptian. Why does this matter? I'm getting to it. Okay, go on. There's a lot of question about who Sarah is. On the one hand, she was important enough for the Vatican to send six bishops and many priests to commemorate the 700-year jubilee of the discovery of her tomb. What did they know? On the other hand, the Vatican decanonized Sarah and, according to one source, tried to edit her out of history. What did they fear? Sarah was referred to as the Egyptian, perhaps because she was born in Egypt. She was also called the Dark Child. Of course, anyone who knows anything about religion knows that this is probably a reference to Lamentations chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, in which it says that the princes of Judah are now black as soot. In other words, she could be of the royal bloodline, a child of Christ born to Mary Magdalene while she was in Egypt. And the connection to Deus Ex is... In Deus Ex, there are the Illuminati. I assume you noticed them. Did you ever wonder how they managed to rule the world? Sure. Well... Here's the deal. In the game, the Illuminati started off as religious and political. They had various political organizations similar to the modern-day Trilateral Commission in the United Nations, both of which are their creations. In the religious realm, they had the ultimate control, the Priory of Zion. The Priory of Zion, spelled with either a Z or an S, depending on your mood, I guess, is an organization that claims to safeguard the descendants of Jesus as well as proof of their heritage, the Holy Grail. In real life, the Priory is an enigma. We know it exists, but we don't know what it is. In the words of Wikipedia, it is an elusive protagonist in many works of both non-fiction and fiction. It has been characterized as anything from the most covertly powerful secret society in Western history to modern Rosicrucian-esque ludibrium. I'm sorry. I like the proper academic degree to understand what that means. It means that it's real, it's featured in a lot of stories, and no one has any idea what it is. Thank you. Most believe it to be a hoax, and the extravagant claims made would tend to support that. The Priory was supposedly founded in Jerusalem during the First Crusade. The mission was to protect the Disposni, or blood relatives of Jesus. The most important among them were, of course, the descendants of Jesus. The Priory supposedly had a large part in the Elf, or underground river, of esotericism. You like using obscure words, don't you? The Priory had a long history, often considered fictional, with many of the greats of the world as its grandmasters. Also, they wanted to restore the Merovingian kings to power because they said those ones were descended from Jesus. They had a funny way of showing it if they were. So why does it matter? Everything I've said so far is true, if you've noticed me saying things like seem, suggest, or claims a lot. That's because I was being honest. Here's where the fictional part comes in. In the game Deus Ex, the Illuminati, though constantly being reborn, held the world under their thumb for centuries. They did this in the political realm in ways I'll let Walton explain to you, but politics doesn't mean everything. For most of history, after the fall of Rome, more gradual decay followed by mercy killing than a fall, really, the church had more power. Even after the Protestant Revolution, the Priory was a way to have power over them. The Pope has to bend to your whims if at any time you can bring a male heir of Jesus into play. Even with the Petrine theory, Jesus overrules Pope. Protestants are no different. The churches had to do what the Illuminati said, otherwise they would find their followers pulled away from them by divine blood. 
That's also why they killed off anyone who told the public. It didn't matter who you were, Gnostics, Cathars, whatever. If the public was allowed to know about the children of Jesus, then the Illuminati would lose their blackmail. They might not be able to control the air that the world chose to lead it. So that's what that was all about. You never stop talking, do you? It must be the antidepressants. Do you want to ask something else? <laughs> 